Hi guys, Sandy Alnock here, Bible journaler, and today we're going to work on Leviticus 26.4. God saying, I will send you rain in its season, and the ground will yield its crops, and the trees their fruit. And I have been really struggling with rain lately, so I have send your rain for my harvest at the top and my tomatoes at the bottom. I know it's still spring, but I'm thinking ahead to summer. Bunch of cherry tomatoes, and I'm going to use Prismacolor pencils to do my lettering here on the top first. Warning, I should have done my background first but you'll see that as it goes along. The reason that I'm doing this verse today is because it has been crazy rainy lately. I don't know about at your house, but in the Seattle area, we've had more rain in April than I can remember in a long time. It's just been nuts. And having two puppies, it's just a muddy mess all the time. And God's been teaching me though, that the rain is what makes the grass green and the trees green. It makes it beautiful where I live. The, the things that can be a pain in the drain in our lives can also be used for good. So he's turning all that rain into something beautiful. And I need to stop whining about it because he does the same thing in my life. He sends hard things. He sends challenges my way. He sends things that are just going to be hard. And I need to just wait for his harvest because he's pouring out because there's a harvest coming. Not that he's sending bad things. But it's, it's just a lot of things. It's not necessarily even bad things right now in my life. My life's going very well, but there's a lot going on. And I am learning to ask him to send the rain for the harvest. I, I want him to pour those things out, even if it means I'm tired and I'm pulling my hair out from one end to the other, struggling with some changes going on with the book and we're still working on producing it and everything. But that's okay because God is creating something new. He's going to reap a harvest out of this. So that's what this page is really all about for me. And the lettering here, one of the things that I realized as I was doing this, I was doing all the different colors that I'm going to use on the whole page in my text and alternating them. But I realized that script harvest that I had down there below for my harvest, because the send your rain was the important part. I wanted the for my harvest to be smaller, but it couldn't be in the cursive. It has to be in more of a straight up font because it was mixing with that F on the four and the Y on my, and you couldn't read it anymore. So I also switched to the lighter red to do the word harvest. So send the rain for my harvest is much simpler and much more readable now rather than having it all kind of scrunched on top of each other. So on the top part, I'm going to have rain. On the bottom part, I'm going to have my tomatoes. And I'm going to color them in such a way that you don't have to actually do any shading but we're going to still have some depth in this whole thing by the time we're done. So I have two reds and I also have two blues and two greens that I'm going to use for this whole piece, but you don't have to do shading with them. Just use your colors selectively. So here I'm doing a bright red tomato and then a darker red one underneath. So it's going to look like the one that's darker moves to the back automatically just because of the color. And when you put the greens on, if you put the greens all the way outside the circle at the top like this, and then color your round tomatoes, it makes it much easier to color the tomato because it's round. These are cherry tomatoes, by the way. Don't fool anybody and try to make them think that a regular tomato is perfectly round because usually they're not. But these cherry tomatoes are pretty much round. You can even use a template if you really wanted to trace something to make them perfectly round. But when you knock one back by using a different color, and using a darker color, it gives you that illusion of dimension and depth without actually having to do any shading. So all I'm doing is coloring solid colors, I'm not doing any, any shading with them. So I'll speed it up here a little bit now, I'm putting some more greens on some of these. And as I'm looking at them, I'm trying to figure out where I want my greens, because I kind of have them sketched in, but I wanted to adjust some of that. If you put the greens more in the center of the tomato, then it looks more like it's tilted the different direction. When they're, they're all behind the tomato, it looks like they're kind of facing away from you. So you're looking at the bottom of it. But when you turn them around a little bit, you do have to color around those greens. But when you do, you're doing negative coloring. Negative coloring is coloring behind the image. So you're making darker shapes behind them. So look how nice that green stem pops out when I've colored around the stem. And you can play with that back and forth as you lay out your tomatoes and you can, of course, follow the sketch that's on my website, Bible Journaling Made Simple, link in the doobly-doo, and go to the sketch gallery and pick up the sketch there. Or you can just design your own tomato layout and just make a bunch of circles and overlay some of them so that there are some to go behind others. And I didn't have 
kind of the whole thing filled in. I didn't want it solid tomatoes because then it might look like a bunch of red grapes. So I decided to put some leaves in there to allow some some depth to start happening here using a darker green now, which is going to make the lighter green pop forward because the darker colors are going to recede to the back. And just like that, it looks like a dimensional picture without having to do any blending or shading. Here's where I started on my background. I should have done my light blue first. If I was smart, I would have done that, but I didn't. So now I'm just trying to go really lightly so that I don't end up messing up with any of my letters. I wanted a variance in the blue. I didn't want a solid blue anyway. So I was trying to go light and dark and light and dark. And then I decided to get out my darker pencil and add the raindrops. And a raindrop is real easy to draw, just a little curve at the bottom that comes to a point up at the top. And you can make them fatter, skinnier, you can make them at an angle, but if you're doing an angle, then it looks like a storm. So you want to do them all the same way, the same, same angle, same direction, unless there's some reason for kind of design-wise making your rain move different directions. But it, generally, all the sheets of rain tend to go the same direction. Now, I decided to do something that did not work out well. But the great thing about colored pencil, as you will see, is that you can fix it. So I was trying to put more blue color in here. It felt like everything was so heavy at the bottom. So I thought, oh, let me put some dark blue up here in the corner. And I didn't like it at all. So I took a kneaded eraser, K-N-E-A-D-E-D. -E -E it's a very soft eraser, very inexpensive, and just rubbed it out. And it's very easy to do. I, it ended up rubbing out a little of the red, but all I had to do was redraw the D a little bit to firm that up. And then I added more raindrops and a little bit of gel pen to fix some of the places where the raindrop interacted with the text. And then I'm adding, just to add a little dimension, apostrophes at the top of each one of my tomatoes. Don't stress out about where you're putting them, just somewhere near the top. And it suddenly looks like they are realistic tomatoes-ish. On top of each of the tomatoes, I took in very tiny letters in my tiniest micron pen. I wrote the things that I'm praying for as a harvest. So the book, I'm really praying that it brings in more people into studying the word and gets the word more deeply into their hearts. I'm praying for hearts. I'm praying for a harvest for God in all of the Bible journaling that I'm doing. I'm praying that the stuff I share on Instagram is going to touch people. I'm praying for my upcoming trip to Puerto Rico. I'm going to be doing a fundraiser after I get back and selling some of my paintings that I create from Puerto Rico to raise some money for them and help the people out there. So I'm praying for a lot of different harvests in areas of my life, and that's what I wrote on my tomatoes. And you can do the same if you do a page with tomatoes all over it. And then we can all be thinking toward summer and all those yummy cherry tomatoes in the garden. Thank you so much for joining me. If you'd like to go join the Facebook group or sign up for my email list, go over to the website, Bible Journaling Made Simple, and sign up for that. The email is going to come out later this week, so you want to make sure you're on the list. And I will talk to you guys later. God bless you.